What is up everybody? It is Og here, back with another video, and in today's video, we are going to be farming some Bloodvine. Now, what I wanted to do was show how I go ahead and solo Bloodvine in a way that pretty much every single class can go ahead and solo Bloodvine as well, so this is not going to be mage-specific, but it is going to be filmed from my mage point of view. I am occasionally going to be using mage abilities as well, but there are other things that other classes can use to basically do the same kind of effects that mages do, but mages probably do have an advantage. The best advantage, though, is definitely to be a hunter. So hunters are probably the best Bloodvine farmers, then rogues, and then mages falling after them. So overall, we're going to be able to show how to get a potential of 20 different herbs each run. And so that's going to give a huge chance for Bloodvine. I'm typically getting about one, sometimes two Bloodvine per each clear. And so you can get four per hour. You can figure out the exact rate on your server, but this is going to be out a lot of gold farms for a lot of other classes. And it's still going to be really good for a mage and especially for a hunter and rogue. And so we're going to be able to get two in the entrance, two outside the panther room, six in the panther room, two from the snakes, two from the tiger room, three from the tiger area. One pack near the enchant that you can get from the enchant temple, and then two in the actual enchant temple themselves. So we're going to be jumping into it. We're first going to show kind of the spots that you can use and how to do the techniques that we're going to be able to use throughout the instance. We're going to jump through each individual kind of spawn and show you how to get them after that. And then after that, we're going to jump into how to actually solo the blood scythe as well so that you can go ahead and get the blood scythe to start this farming. And I'm going to show you with my gnome mage. If you are enjoying this video and other videos on the channel, definitely check out the Twitch where I do all this live and I pretty much just play everything that I do live on the channel. And you can also subscribe down below and hit that ring bell so you can be notified as soon as I make new videos. Let's jump into it. Okay, so here we are in a fresh instance. I'm going to be going over the individual spots so you guys can get some of these farms as well as how to be able to get the herbs. So starting off, we have two herbs right off the bat that you can get. One is going to be right here to the left and the other is going to be over to the right. Now you're going to be able to see the one on the left in the next video, so I'm not going to focus on that too much here. But one big thing to kind of note for all these individual things you can get is that line of sight actually plays a key role when you're going through these farms because line of sighting the mobs actually causes you to not be able to get hit or seen when you are looting the herbs. So the line of sight there, as we saw in the very first kind of herb right here, allows us to basically hide from these mobs. Now what you want to make sure you do is that if there is a mob standing right here you want to wait until that mob goes away just so that you don't get aggro when you're jumping across but you jump across jump past this pillar come back up to the pillar and use that pillar as line of sight to go ahead and line of sight this serpent loot the herb and then turn around now as a mage i slow fall off of here but you don't need so fall you could just run into the water and just try to get up to this path or you can go onto the left path and then go around whatever you want to do but here i just jump into the side and we go up the mountain now, if you do jump into the water, I'll be showing that again later as well. You want to make sure that you run up along the left side so you don't aggro the crocs. So make sure to watch the second part where I do just jump into the water like that. Come across the bridge, there's going to be three pats. There's going to be a berserker. There's going to be a pack of three panthers right here. And there's going to be this pack of two mobs right there. So I mark them all here just to kind of show it's okay if you aggro the panthers. Don't try to aggro the other two mobs, though. It could be bad, especially the berserker. Aggro them, come running into the temple, and immediately bank onto one of these two sides. The second level of the temple is actually a reset spot for all of these mobs. And so that's the beautiful thing, and that's why you can do this with pretty much any class, is because you can reset on the second level of the temple every single time. So here within this panther temple area, there's actually six herb spawns that we could potentially get. There's one right here, one right here, one on each side, and two in the back. And I've actually had two in the back spawn at the same time. Make sure you let all the mobs reset so you don't accidentally aggro a couple mobs while they're resetting. To get this golden sansom, though, I'm going to show it as if it was any class doing it. Now, obviously, I'm going to have a slight advantage being a mage, and I can use Nova and things like that. So as far as the recovery goes, there's other things other classes can use. Vanish, Feign Death, Earthbind, Totem, Piercing Howl. You guys get the point. So there's stuff that every single class can use, but I'm going to be showing the main way to be able to pull all these mobs without needing a class-specific things such as blizzard so here what we want to do is we want to start on the second lever level we see here that on the left side we can go ahead and wand those mobs jump back up to this post and then run back up the top what's happening now is that all the mobs are looping around and so we want to get as far away from the mobs as possible because when we jump back onto that second level they're going to start resetting and so we want to get them as far away from the node as possible so we come into the corner stop right there and we can see that all the mobs are pretty much like halfway through if you just run normally, you're going to be able to get to the side before they reset. I use blink, but 
you're going to be able to get there. You can see I have some extra seconds here just waiting at the end. As soon as they reset, jump down, go for the herb. One thing I found really helps when you're doing this is have the herb kind of targeted almost before you even jump down. Now here, I'm going to go ahead and use Nova, but you can see I get a Bloodvine right there. So we're starting off pretty well with this farm. And then I just run up along the right side of the ramp, back up onto the second level, and we're good to reset. I'm immediately going into the herbs in the back because I know that there are herbs in the back. The herbs in the back are actually going to be the easiest of the herbs to get. Reason being, these mobs have to run all the way around the temple, all the way up the temple, and then all the way back around to be able to reset. So here what we're going to do is we're just going to wand this blood drinker. You can use a throwing knife, a arrow, whatever. Make sure all the mobs aggro though. There's some times where for whatever reason the blood drinker that I just targeted sometimes does not actually aggro and it's almost like they're split into two packs. I'm not sure if that's intentional or if it's more just a little thing that occurs here and there. So make sure that you go ahead and aggro them. Now if you aren't a mage I recommend just trying to use any slow effects you can on those mobs but I kind of run into that second pack just so I can nova all of them to get me some extra time. But you just run around the side. If you want to use speed potions you can use speed potions as well but you probably shouldn't need them. So now you come around the side, same thing as before, we're gonna go into the corner, jump off, you can aggro one of the two side packs, it doesn't really matter, they won't be able to hit you, get over to the side, and then jump down and get ready to reset. So again, you're gonna go ahead and wait for them to reset, and then you're gonna jump off. Now there is one thing that I did here, and typically I wait for the panther pats to be gone. So there's one panther patrol that goes all the way through here, and you're about to see them come around the corner. And so, I didn't reset before these mobs came around the corner. And so I was trying to think of the best way to handle this because I only have 39% health. If you run behind this large tree right here, this actually acts as a reset spot. The unfortunate part is that you also aggro the blood drinkers on the right. So here I can stand behind here and I can bandage to get back up to full, but then I'm still gonna have to go ahead and make the run to the end. And so what we ultimately have to do is we ultimately have to run past all these mobs and get around them. So one thing that'll help is if you jump on the intersection of these, you'll eventually still probably aggro this group to the left, but if you're jumping on the inside, it might help for a little bit just to keep them off you for a while. So then as a mage, obviously I have the benefit of being able to blink past these mobs, but again, just earth bind, something like that, and try to get to the second level so you can get down a reset. Hopefully though, the other option is that the mobs typically aren't there. And so if you are a mage, you're able to slow fall from the top of the tree that is next to that pass point. So I'll show you that right now. So on the left here, this tree, if you run up this tree, you can slow fall with a mount back onto the second level. But if you're not a mage, you will have to run back around. Once those mobs reset, we can go ahead and leave the panther temple because there's no more nodes in there. And so what we're going to do here is we're on out. There's going to be a pathing berserker and two panthers. You want to make sure that you avoid them to make sure you don't aggro because there's not any great reset spots. Here there's also a pack of snakes that pats back and forth. If you are a mage, you're going to be able to get these nodes out here in the corner after you kill the next area. But if you're not a mage, you could try to get them as well and try to run all the way back to the panther spot to reset, but you might die just because of the amount of mobs that you might find on your way. So what we're going to do is we're going to wait for them to get out of line of sight, and then we're going to run around. There is a chance that the panther is going to be, or sorry, not the panther, that the berserker is going to be pathing in front of the next area so you can't run around him. You can actually run into the entrance here and just hug the wall in the entrance to avoid the berserker as he walks by this way. But in this case, he was not there, so we were just able to go. And so here, this is a mage-specific kind of thing. You aren't going to be able to kill the tigers if you are not a mage. However, you will be able to jump up on the left side of the platform if you're not a mage, and you can go try to get nodes that are in this temple on the right side. Now, it, I wouldn't recommend it just because it does provide a really high chance for death, and ultimately, at the end of the day, then you're going to be running back a lot. But if you are a mage, what you can do is you can go ahead and kill these tigers. So it's an easy you know, mount pool. What you can do is you just mount up, run back. I recommend just running around, around the side. Make sure that you have Ice Barrier up, maybe Mana Shield before you go into it, and then you're good to go. The biggest aspect of this farm and the biggest complexity of it comes from the cubs. So the cubs actually run away when they get lower health, anything below around 50%. And so what you wanna do is you wanna make sure that you don't get them too low too fast. And I actually messed up on that with this pool. And so you're gonna see some interesting maneuvering that I had to do. But here you're gonna see that I opened up with a flame strike and cone of cold, which is what you should not do. You should open up with a cone of cold and then just kite around for a little bit and then go into flame strike, cone of cold, and then arcane explosion. But you'll see here that cubs are starting to run away in all different areas. I'm trying to arcane explosion them just to get them down. And I'm able to take care of these four cubs on the right. But then what ends up happening is that the cub on the left is now running over into the tiger and axe throw room with the tiger mount boss. 
And so ultimately he's going to go aggro some mobs. And so I'm sitting here kind of waiting for that to happen, wondering if he maybe died on the way, which I don't think he did and trying to kind of figure out what I can do to handle this. And so eventually what we're going to see is that as soon as we go for, I think it's this Nova mobs are going to start coming around the side and just getting ready to obliterate me. And so you can handle that if you use maneuvering around the temple. And so behind the tiger boss, there's actually some reset spots. So here the mobs come, I run over to the side, I block the ax throwers at flurry ax, which is horrible cold snap Nova and get those mobs Nova around there jump up onto this platform and then this is a reset spot this could be used to get all the herbs down here which is really nice but it can also just be used to reset the mobs if this ever does happen flurry axe is one of the axe throwers abilities which basically they start spinning around in a circle throwing axes at you and they do stun you every single time that they do that and they also hit for about 700 damage each piece and so if you're getting hit by axe flurry as you can see right here i had to block again because this guy was still axe flurrying on me he will be able to take you out very quickly in the event that you still do have aggro on the side and you're worried about another axe flurry, what you can do is jump down in this main area and every single one of these sides in the main area of the tiger boss is actually a reset spot. A lot of these jumps up here as well are reset spots, but I recommend just getting onto the side that way you're out of range of axe flurry. And you can see here now he's flurrying, but I am out of range. Once we get past this point, we can go ahead and get back up mana and health, and then we can go back and try to kill the tigers. So here we are back in the tiger pool, and so we're going to be able to get them down this time and get these extra two nodes. So this is going to be kind of the main focus of the run. I'm only 11 minutes in, even with the reset, so there's still a bunch more that we can get, and so we're going to show you more. But when you get started, it might take you a little bit longer to get used to everything if you have run back. This is where you're going to get the majority of the herbs. From here, you're going to be looking at one or two piles here and there kind of thing. But in the panther room, as I said before, there can be six. There's five, There's three different herb spawns in this room. There's two herb spawns in the tiger room that we can get. Only focus on the south quadrant of the tiger room. The north quadrant is going to be very, very difficult to get those herbs because the axers will stop and cast flurry axe for a while. So only focus on the south quadrant but there's another two that we can get in there. And then from here, we can even go over to the temple for where you can turn in the shoulder or sorry, the head and leg enchant to get some more as well. But here we're focusing on the tigers. And so the way to kill the tigers is just going to be use Kona cold and use flame strike Kona cold shatter combo. So the majority of your damage is going to come from that flame, flame strike Kona cold shatter combo. But outside of that, you can also go ahead. If you're clear casting, try to fish for clear casting procs. And what I recommend typically is using rank one, Nova when they, or sorry, rank one Kona Cold when they are not nova so that you save as much mana as possible and focus the majority of your damage when you have the Nova for the extra shatter chance. But here, as you see, we're just rank one trying to get clear casting procs and get them down. I have a bunch of other videos on how to do these farms, so they'll be linked up above and down in the description if you guys want to check them out. And so they focus more on the actual killing of the tigers, which is something you can also supplement these farms with. But here, we're just going to focus on the blood vines. So once we get this down, we're going to go ahead and get the other two packs. Make sure that you loot all the tigers because they can have blues. And actually in the other video, we did get a blue from this specific pack. They can also have epics and things like that. So definitely make sure that you're looting them. But here we go for the mountain sage and the dream foil. There's also two spawns that can happen in this room next to us right here. And you can get both of those by jumping around the perimeter and then going over the top. And you actually won't aggro any of the mobs or anything like that. But we're going to focus on just going for the temple. And so what you're going to do here on the way to the temple is there's sometimes a node right there. You can aggro this group and Nova them and then get that node and then reset on the side. And you'll be able to see that in the other video. But for this, we just want to go for this temple. If there is the if there is the snakes padding and the berserker, the snakes you could aggro and reset on the reset point. It's not too bad. But the berserker, you're not going to be able to get away from. So definitely have to make sure that the berserker always plays safer rather than sorry. As far as these pool goes, these pools go, just because there's so much damage that can be coming out really quickly, and it's not worth a three minute run back and then running back all the way through the instance and avoiding paths and things like that, just to be able to save about ten seconds. And so here you can see I wait literally ten seconds for this berserker to go by, where if I run up this ramp, I have about probably like a twenty five to thirty percent chance of dying. So definitely make sure you just wait and it'll be better for you in the long run. This second level of this temple is actually a reset spot because the mobs are not able to get there from terrain. And so anytime that there's like a second level where the mobs can't get there from terrain, or even just the first level where the mobs can't get there from terrain, it's gonna be a reset spot. And so what you can do is you can actually go ahead and aggro these adders and then jump back up onto the top, run around, and then you can get the herbs here in the corner. 
So I believe that there's two different herb spawns that can happen here in this temple area that you can get. And so it's really, really good to use. It's really easy to do. What you want to do is you want to angle and you want to jump onto the side. Now I accidentally kept on running and so I fell off. So right after this, I will show how to jump on the side without running off, which is the preferred method that we don't aggro the extra mobs at the bottom. But once you get up to the top, you're going to blizzard or just wait for the extra mobs to get there. And then you jump onto the second level and get ready to go down. Golden Sam Sams are always going to be the hardest ones to find just because they blend in perfectly with the green. But just kind of throw your mouse around until you find it and then hone in on the spot and get ready to get it as soon as you drop combat. So as soon as we drop combat here, what we're going to do is jump down, loot the herb, and then we're going to run around the back side of the temple. You could go around the front side. Going around the front side is going to have less chance of getting the mobs, but you also have a much higher chance of dying. And here we get another bloodvine coming in there. Now the second level of the temple is a reset spot if you can get on this front spot. And so here you can see that I can actually reset the back mobs right here. And so if you just wanted to log out now, if you were done and you were ready to reset with your alt, then you're good to go. But if not, I wanted to show you the jump. And so we'll be showing you that jump in a second. To actually go ahead and reset when you're done with your run, you just log out of your main, log into your level one alt that's already in the group, reset, and you're good to go. The way that you get those two characters into the same group is that you have somebody, one of your friends or somebody in your guild or something like that, go ahead and invite both your main, log on to your alt, and then invite your alt. And so both of those two are in the same group. And as long as you don't stay logged out for more than, I believe it's five minutes, that group will not disband. And so as long as you stay logged in on one tune, that group can last until you're logging out. And so you can just go back and forth, just logging out, resetting, and you're good to go. There is a way to reset the instance, even if you have cleared it already. I don't know if they're gonna be fixing that though, so I wouldn't rely on that necessarily, but that is working as of now. So here we're going to jump back onto the second second section. I just want to show this jump onto the ledge and show you exactly where to jump on the ledge so you can get on there real easily so that you can go ahead and use that jump more optimally so you don't aggro the bottom packs. We can see that in about 15 minutes, we got 91 gold worth of loot. We did get two blood binds, which was nice, but you could typically probably get one every single run. As I said before, there's going to be a ton of nodes. You're not going to get every single one every single time, obviously, but you will be able to get a lot of them. So I also want to show you a sloppier run to show you some of the things that you're going to want to avoid when you're going through and doing this. And so you can see that loot appraiser there before where I had a run right previous, but here you can see that I'm just going to come in here and I think I accidentally aggro this group when I'm coming across. Oh no, I just fall into the water. Yeah, this entire run is pretty sloppy. And so, but what you could do is you could just blink across the water. We could show you here that any tune can do it. I recommend getting a running jump before you go into the water. It's gonna help you get to the location quicker. But what you wanna do is you wanna jump up onto this part right here and then run around to the left. If you go too far to the right, you will go ahead and aggro the crocs. Since we already focused on the majority of the other stuff, I'm gonna skip forward to where we actually do in the pools. And so here we're trying to get the golden Sam Sam on the right but you can end up getting the exact same way as you get the golden sand sim on the left. So we want this blood drinker right there. Go ahead, run up to the top, run to the back, and then cross over just like before. Here you jump down on the other side. That gives the mobs enough time to run up to the top so that you're able to get across, go across. Make sure that you find the herb before you jump down. It really helps as far as not running into extra problems when you jump down and not being able to find the herb, taking extra time and maybe not getting it. And then you go ahead, jump down, and grab the herb itself, and then just go back to safety on the second platform level. For the second node, same thing right in the back with the dream foil itself. You go ahead and aggro those two mobs, run over to the side here on the second level, make sure to hug the inside so you don't aggro the group on the right. As long as you're on the second level for less than 10 seconds, the mobs will not reset. So you could take up to 10 seconds running to get back into an optimal position, go around the side just like before, run up onto the third level, let the mobs run all the way around, and you have plenty of room to be able to get this. You can see here that we have two nodes on this bottom side right here. And so one thing with these two nodes, you can definitely get them, but they are gonna to be tough. And I would recommend being a mage. Without being a mage, they are gonna be very, very tough to get. Or if you're a hunter, they're gonna be very easy to get. But basically what you have to do is you have to use the front resets of the Panther Room. So this wall right here, you have to stand on that wall. You have to um, jump off then and wand, run around the right side of the wall or the left side in this perspective and jump up onto the wall, get back to that reset spot, and then jump off and get it. So it's the exact same mechanics, and you guys can practice it, feel free, but it is gonna be much more difficult. Here, I wanted to show you the slow fall trick, and so if you are able to slow fall and mount up, and you don't have the Panthers running around, what you can do is actually just get right back up onto the second platform. So you go ahead and use slow fall if you're a mage, jump up, and get good to go. You can also use noggin foggers if you're not a mage. Highly recommend having those for doing these farms just because that slow fall does help. So here we're gonna show you how to be able to get some herbs in this room with the tigers. Now, 
the herbs in the center of the room are going to be very difficult to get, especially the dream foil. It's much easier with two people, but you can do it with one. And so the way that you're going to be able to do it with one is you're going to go up. I recommend sheeping one of the axe throwers, but if you jump up this side, you come up onto this pathway right here, jump up onto the ledge, you can actually go ahead and aggro these mobs without needing to worry about taking any damage or things like that. You will have to jump into their area and go around the side or else they're gonna run around the back side of the room and it won't work. But if you go around the front side, you can then jump up onto this wall and then jump up again and you can get out. Now what I recommend doing here is falling off because the Axe Flurry will go ahead and kill you probably. If you don't, you can see I almost die there. The issue though with getting the stream foil in the middle is that the Axe Throwers are taking a long time to get down and then they have to come around. So while you're running away from the tigers, which are immediately running, you can see that axe thrower still isn't even all the way down. And so when you go back up, he's still not going to be down. He's just, you might reset, or you're just going to be having to deal with him going for the blood foil and he's, or dream foil, and he's probably going to hit you. And so in order to get to the dream foil, you're going to need to really do this very well. And it might not be worth the time, to be honest. If you get it down well, though, this is another herb that you can get. You can definitely get the two alongside this wall. This wall is actually a reset spot for everyone else who needs to know. On the inside, there's a smaller wall. And so you can actually use it as a reset spot where you can jump up and get the ner get the herbs without ever even being hit. Okay, so here's how you could get the herb if it's in front of this group. So this is on the way to the temple with the head and shoulder or head and leg enchants. What you want to do is you want to aggro these mobs. If there's a witch doctor or a priest or an axer or something like that, something with a ranged ability, what you want to do is you want to sheep it. You want to aggro the other two mobs. For whatever reason, these tigers didn't aggro with a blood drinker. Don't know if they're not on the same aggro table or whatever, but go ahead and aggro that. Bring them together, and then you're going to go for the Nova. Once you have the Nova, you just run right up to here, grab the purple lotus, and then you go back to this reset spot behind there, so I'll show the reset spot as well. Once you come back behind here, you blink, and you jump up onto this pathway. If you are a gnome, you might have to go around the left side. The left side is going to have, or the right side now, is going to have a smaller area to jump up and so you're going to be able to get on top of that a lot easier just to include some extra herbs when you're going in through here you can use this line of sight right here as a reset spot you can go ahead sneak up to this this node right here and you can go ahead and loot this node all the reset spots work the same as the other one over here where you can actually go ahead and get the herb without actually aggroing the mobs make sure though when you come out of here that you go right back the way you came because if you go too far to the left you will aggro that axe that were coming out of there here i wanted to show a nice way to reset on the left side of the temple and so there's a dream foil that can spawn here now the thing with this dream foil is that there's not a great way to get back because the mobs could aggro against you so you could just blink around to the side right there and then run around just like normal the alternative method, if you don't have blink, is actually to come up onto this pillar. And what you can do is you can jump up onto this pillar and then jump back to the second level of the area. And so it takes a little bit to get used to, but you jump from just below kind of the top of this ledge onto this pillar, and then you can go back up. Here I failed to jump, and so I had to run around like normal. But this is exactly what you could use in the event that you get stuck on this left side. So here's another herb on the right side of the temple, which you can get. Now, the tricky thing with this herb is that you potentially could die. This is one you really got to be careful with because typically there's a witch doctor or something like that, or I've had a head hunter, I've had two snakes and things like that. And so basically with this group, what you want to do is you want to aggro them up to the top and then jump down and go for it and then go for the reset spot back at the panther. Unfortunately, if you let these mobs get too close, especially with the raptors and things like that, they build up thrash, and then you're actually going to see the raptor one hit me. And so I wait, just make sure that you're not waiting too long where these mobs could actually go ahead and hit you too much because they can one shot you like that. And I actually got hit for 1445. But when we get back, this is how we do it successfully. And so we can go ahead and slow down the mobs right here, make sure that they're slowed, then we can run over, go ahead and get the Nova. You'll see that the witch doctor does break out of my sheep early, but I still have plenty of time with her running around, jump down and get the golden Sam Sam. Honestly, if you wanted to, you could probably just let the mobs come up to the top and then jump down anyways, and you'll probably have enough room, but this allows you to get around the side. Now we're back at the tiger platform again. So we're going for the mountain silver stage. Make sure that you get up onto this post quick enough. There's the mountain silver stage in the corner though that we can get. You can see the axe, axe throwers are flurrying. And so you wanna make sure that you stay up on the top a little bit just to give them enough time to come out of the axe flurry so that they don't run down too slow. Let them come out of the axe flurry and then you can get up. Because of how far these axe throwers got, we probably could even get the dream foil from before, but in this event where you're just actually going for the blood vine itself. 
or sorry, for the mountain silver sage. And so here we come down. You could jump up onto the sledge as a reset spot. There are cubs that can aggro you. You can go ahead and sheep them if you need to. But you go ahead and get this mountain silver sage, jump up onto the ledge, and then you go around the side on the ledge, and you're not aggroing any mobs. Get over to this left side, and then you can just reset on the left side and be good to go. So in order to actually get the blood vine, one of the things we're going to need is the blood scythe. So the blood scythe comes out of these voodoo piles on the ground. So here I'm trying to get it on my no mage. I still have personally not gotten it on my no mage, but I can solo as a mage, and anybody else can solo as any other class three, and then mages can solo an additional one every single run through as well. But here we're gonna be able to solo three hoodoo piles with any class, I'm gonna show you exactly how real quick. And so if you just do the standard jump down that we've been doing, you come over to the side, you will be able to loot the hoodoo piles on the side, just like you would loot any of the other herbs. Now, the one thing with the hoodoo piles is that they do have the chance to mind control you. And so you could try to ice block and things like that, but it extends the aggro range that you have. And so you're probably gonna aggro a lot of the other mobs if you do get it. So unfortunately, you probably are gonna die a few times. Recommend taking off all your gear before you start doing this, just so that you don't die unnecessarily and lose, you know, durability. But here you can see that I do get aggro and I die right there. You can use that exact same technique though with every single one in the panther room. Outside of that, as a mage, the fourth one that you can solo is in the tiger room itself. After you kill all the tigers, there's one in the middle that you can get. Then you just blink away from the road and that'll be your safest option as a mage. It is worthwhile to say though, that in order to actually get the blood vine themselves, you do have to be 300 herb. So make sure that you are 300 herbalism before you even try to go ahead and get the blood vine, but you can get the blood scythe without even being herbalism at all, and you will be able to get it like that. All right, everyone, that wraps up today's video. I hope you all enjoyed it, and if you did, please subscribe and leave a like and a comment below to let me know so. And if you guys have any other ideas for any other videos, please let me know in the comments below. Also, check out the description for the Twitch where I do all this live, and also for my Twitter and Discord where you guys can be notified of any future updates and when I'm going to go live on stream. So I'll see you guys in the next video.